Welcome to Uncaged, a show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Robert Stevenson. Hey, Robert, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it's great to have you on the program. Robert is the CEO at Intelity. Intelity is a company that offers the broadest platform available to seamlessly connect service industry workforces directly to their customers. And we'll talk more about all of the things that have been built at Intelity and, and how they're rolling those things out across the hospitality industry. But before we get there, Robert, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your career. Yeah, great. Um, well, I'm a tech executive. I've been uh, uh, building technology platforms for, for quite a few years uh, and uh, have focused uh, a lot on trying to solve uh, problems uh, where you've got, uh, you know, particularly an industry where there might be a gap uh, that consumers uh, need filled. And uh, the building of a platform can help, I would say, sort of mid-tier, middle market type companies that may not have engineering capability or resources or, frankly, the time uh, to fulfill those needs. And they come and, and, and work with me and, and my teams. I have an earlier uh, part of my career, which is always interesting to people in, in the video game industry. So I uh, have contributed to uh, from an engineering uh, uh, direction, producing direction, some art, even some sound uh, work way back, um, probably 50 to 100 games, uh, some notable franchises and so wow. forth. So originally kind of started there. And, you know, you know over that, time, that came up with one of my older son is very into vintage video games. And oh, yeah. So we were going through all the old Atari games yesterday. <laughs> Excellent. No, I actually worked. I actually worked at Atari. So Atari was uh Found it way back in the 80s, and then it, it's passed through a number of corporate hands over the years. And I worked at Atari for about four and a half years or so and uh, did some cool game, game content with them. But their they're, uh, vintage IP, their old IP still goes strong. There's still versions of, of uh, some of the uh, beloved classics uh, yeah. that are out there that you can play even still today. So, so tell me uh, what you're building here at Intellity. It, it sounds like uh, you guys are very well positioned. Yeah, we... Um, we really focus a lot on the hospitality in market, you know, kind of as your, your preamble talked about, you were really trying to connect uh, the guest, you know, kind of front of house, as we call it, uh, you know, and all that kind of customer facing guest facing, facing components uh, that people define today. They call it kind of guest experience or the digital guest experience. And we really try to wire that up in a very sophisticated manner. And uh, connect that to the back of house, which is really the staff and being able to operationalize uh, anything that the guest might want. And what that boils down to ultimately is, you know, um, people are really trained and, and really even bought in on, you know, from the pandemic on mobility and using their mobile phone for just about everything you can, you can, you can think of nowadays. Uh, and uh, if you weren't doing it before the pandemic, you are probably now because uh, there was no other way to do things. And that's really taken foot in, in hospitality, obviously in travel, you know, Uber taught people ride sharing and airlines have, have moved very, very strongly in a direction of mobile phones and mobile phone access. Hotels a little bit behind. It's a, it's a, it's a slower industry to adopt tech, uh, but we're there to support them uh, with a very robust, broad platform that allows, um, you know, a guest journey to start from, uh, from booking and go all the way through their stay and everything at the, uh, the hotel level, uh, services, amenities, um, and operationalize all that, work with the staff, you know, check into their room uh, remotely, mobile key access to the door, check out fluidly, and, uh, and exit. And, uh, you know, maybe return back to that hotel because they had a great experience and they had a great digital experience as, as well. Um, our platform does other things in terms of in-room uh, connect connectivity to the television, to uh, tablets at the uh, at the bed stand, various things that luxury properties kind of tend to tap into. Uh, but the gist of it really is about the guest experience and making that very robust, uh, very feature rich, um, and uh, allowing it. hotels to, yeah, uh, to, no, to act on it. It sounds like the holy grail. You know, I listen to it and I'm thinking, wow, the amount of data that uh, you're able to kind of bring into play there, bring to fore and really optimize the customer experience as well as the value that the hospitality group be able to capture is incredible. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, the, the, the guest journey um, is, is something that I think people, you know, have thought about in a very fragmented way in the past. Um, you know, you book here, you might stay at one brand over here and have a mobile app there. Next hotel you stay at, maybe they don't have a mobile app. You're just using, you know, keys and talking to staff to get access to the room and, you know, housekeeping or whatever else you need. And the ability to actually synthesize that and make it a contiguous experience you know, really hasn't come about in the last couple of years. And you're absolutely right, right? Behind the scenes, it's a lot about data. It's about moving data around, understanding a reservation, understanding the guest, and being able to uh, action upon that. And it's getting, uh, you know, as we look towards the future, more sophisticated, more data, more AI, uh, more smart ways of doing things to make the, uh, the traveler's journey as they interact with the hotel property even more, um, you know, even more rich and and more sort of like, pre-done so there's less yeah. choosing and less thinking about stuff right yeah yeah i mean i'd be curious to kind of get a sense of i mean this is a space all that unified data is extremely valuable and i hear you that it's been very siloed and, and getting it together is going to be absolutely critical i mean what are the things that you're seeing right now that are top of mind or kind of the key trends for the customers that you guys are talking to yeah, we're, you know, we're a B2B business, uh, but we obviously concern ourselves with the guests. So we have a B2B to see uh, from some aspects of what we do. You know, our customer at, at the hotel level uh, is very concerned about the digital guest journey. Uh, they're also concerned a lot, you know, with the kind of contactless uh, capabilities that our platform provides, other platforms, other ways of doing things. You do have a lot of guests that are coming in and they're trained on the mobile phone. They're also having a health and safety concern, right? Even the new, uh, you know, BA5 variant of, of COVID that's kind of rearing its head, yeah. you know, those kinds of things. I think we can expect those to continue for years and years to come and, and having a digital pathway, very important. And the other thing I would say, you know, our customers really get, um, you know, concerned with really around today, service industry workforces have come back. Uh, much more so than they were, let's say, a year ago. But a lot of people, you know, switched careers, switched jobs in the pandemic, and you've got a lot of frontline workers at hotels. Uh, some are just testing the waters. Maybe they are exploring whether they want a career in hospitality or whether they don't. And so you've got a lot of turnover. You've got a lot of light staffing type situations where um, hotels are operating at, you know, 30% reduced staff, you know, 40%, even in some cases, you know, 50% or more. And they're working and trying to, you know, rectify this problem, but it is a big concern and technology uh, like our platform can help, right? You know, where we come in and we offset a mobile, a mobile, uh, you know, check-in with a mobile check-in um, that saves the front desk time, right? If we automatically route you know, in-room dining request uh, straight to the POS, straight to the kitchen, get it fulfilled. And the only human labor that's needed is the actual cooking of the meal and walking it to the room. Um, that is, uh, you know, that saves quite a few minutes of, of phone time, review time, uh, yeah. manual entry time, right? And so those things add up when you talk about, you know, the scale of a hotel of 100 rooms, 500 rooms, 1,000 rooms. We work with some hotels that are at 3,000 rooms, right? Wow. Um, adds up very, very quickly. And so, you know, the staffing consideration is also a factor in today's, uh, today's hospitality and market. Yeah. And, and I mean, for many, many reasons, I've been speaking to executives of recruiting firms and they're saying really just even finding staff for the hospitality segment is extremely difficult right now. So I think a solution that allows these operators to be more efficient in that regard is really critical. But, you know, I wanted to change gears a little bit and ask you about this moment that we've been living through the pandemic. And I can see absolutely how the Intelity product suite helps customers handle maybe less touchable surfaces. You know, uh, it's very, very good in terms of being a solution in the pandemic. But I'd be curious as a CEO, how you and Intelity operated as a business. You know, how did things change on your side of the fence during the last couple of years? And what were some of the insights that you've gathered? Yeah, it is a great question. And, and uh, you know, I would say for the hospitality industry, uh, and related, you know, um, uh, you know, long-term rental, residential type stuff, you know, very dark time, right? You know, a lot of, a lot of people not traveling, you know, business and events collapsed um, and, uh, and uh, a lot of suffering, I think, you know, uh, particularly for, 
um, you know, hotels that were, you know, not branded and not well supported, or maybe uh, just just coming coming out and launching pre pandemic and hadn't built up a, a loyal customer base. And so really hard time. Um, but I, I think the the jump into some technology to help uh, alleviate and make a contactless journey from an intelligence standpoint, that was something we were already doing. The word contactless really just wasn't, you know, it wasn't in vogue, you know, it, it became a thing as, as a function of the pandemic, yeah. but the capability to do mobile key and do some mobile check-in, those kinds of things did exist. And for us, it was kind of, you know, I, I call it a, a doubling down, a tripling down of, of that capability and continuing to enhance it. And we're still doing that today, right? Like the sophistication of, of a flow for a check-in, you know, it might feel simple to you, um, you know, if you're going to a hotel and you're experiencing wants, but each hotel is unique, right? You know, the, the health and safety regulations, the reg mm-hmm. card, as we call it, perhaps there's government regulations as there are in many countries that you have to ch- check through. Maybe they need ID, maybe they need your credit card because you came in through an OTA and they don't. So it's quite a bit of flexibility that needs needed and, and, and high variation from hotel to hotel. And so that's an area that we've really focused on, you know, as, as a, you know, something that spurred out of the pandemic is, hey, take your mobile check-in product, take your mobile key product, and now, um, you know, jack some steroids in there and, and really take it, uh, you know, as far as it can go, you know, past a, a Marriott Bonvoy, past the Hilton Honors level of configurability and, uh, and functionality. And that that's really, you know, been a big driver for us coming out of the pandemic um, and continues today, right? There's a ton of interest in it, um, not only just from health and safety, but also, you know, people, they're time sensitive, right? Do you, do you really want to stand in line? Uh, do you really need to go through and present credit cards and, you know, perhaps go through a, you know, relatively laborious, uh, laborious and boring process at the front desk um, when you're a tired business traveler, you're just back on the road and you really just want to get to your room, right? Yeah. And I was curious, I mean, I can see, as I said, you know, that the advantages for your customer base is, is uh, incredible. And I can't see the pace of the need slowing down for you guys at Intelity. I mean, did you guys go virtual? Did you stay in the office, come up with yeah. a hybrid solution? Where were you? Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, we went pretty virtual. You know, the good news for us was big chunks of our team were already virtual uh, pre-pandemic. We had a, we had a kind of a hybrid rolling model for a lot of our engineers and, and different aspects of our company, just because we're in major metro areas where Los Angeles and, you know, you got people living in Orange County, Los Angeles that are commuting in to our office in downtown. That, that's a, that's a hard commute, right? Like, so you don't want to necessarily make those people uh, do that even pre-pandemic, right? So we, we had a rolling kind of hybrid uh, plan uh, that was, you know, uh, well, well along and people were taking advantage of it before the pandemic. We just accelerated that um, and, uh, and have kind of stuck with it. We do have a need. We do have some engineers, our deployment engineers, our implementations team members, and some of our project managers that do need to kind of work in close proximity. It's, it's a expeditious in terms of getting things done yeah. and focus. And there's some manual tasks as well. And, and so uh, we, we have an office in Orlando. That, that team is in there. Um, not every day of the week, but a big chunk of them are in there multiple times during the week. And, um, and so we, you know, we try to, uh, you know, operate in this kind of hybrid model with some teams that are uh, much more in uh, the office and some teams that are more out of the office, but across you the country, know, I, it's very I think hybrid. That- Probably because of your engineering background, it's in some ways I find probably the team that adapted first for most companies was their developer team, you know, because they, they've always wanted to be virtual. So was... Absolutely. Absolutely. And you think about it, right? You know, there's there's needs for meeting and talking about stuff and maybe getting on a whiteboard, but the developer community has been supported with remote tools forever, right? You know, like cloud-based tools and yeah. code sharing tools and team working tools, like they just have grown up with that as as a way of of potentially uh, doing work and so it was much more natural i think for engineers to move in that direction very yeah. quickly well you know it's funny you know we come out of this pandemic and and you're absolutely right it was such a challenging moment it has been a challenging moment for the hospitality segment i imagine it's equally challenging now as they're dealing with such a surge of people wanting to travel and do things again but you know this year 2022 has been an interesting one so far what do you see on the horizon for intelity yeah you know, it's it's great and you're absolutely right there's this 
I think we 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 have heard it called revenge travel that uh, that people are you know so been so cooped it. up that they just want to jump back in and they're you know overspending and going crazy with some some travel which is great to see. Uh, it does run afoul of the fact that there's light staffing at hotels and in various aspects of the of the travel arc. I, I think for Intelity, you know, uh, our focus is like what we talked about maybe a little earlier in the uh, in the call. Really, you know, data and uh, maximizing our understanding of the guest as the guest goes through the guest experience and being able to uh, better leverage that to drive our platform forward. You know, there's always a need for additional little functions here and there. Hey, could we add this feature? You know, here's a little knob over here where we can change something. There's always those kinds of things uh, that come through and a lot of it's driven by our hotelier partners and uh, happy to continue to expand the platform in that way. But the meteor, the meteor substance really is, hey, how can we take the data? How can we take AI and some machine learning and really leverage that to um, improve the guest experience in an automated way or improve the staff experience as they're dealing with the guests through our platform and through related tools and help them out, right? Um, you know, there's no reason why uh, certain things need necessarily have human intervention when they can be automatically routed or they can be smartly sort of solved. And that's a big part, I think, across travel as, as travel tech and uh, hospitality tech look forward. Uh, it's a big part of things uh, that I think people will begin to really feel the impact in the next three to five years. And certainly as we look out like a decade from now, uh, it will be a very new world in terms of, hey, I want to book a trip. Um, you know, it won't be a widget. You can just press the button and you magically have a trip on the other side. However, uh, it might be where the steps that you need to take to have a really wonderful experience are very reduced um, and very catered to, to, to you or to your family or to your business or whatever it is that's making you get out on the road. You know, Robert, after being on the road for the last two months, that sounds pretty great to me. <laughs> that yes. great to me. <laughs> well, listen, Robert, it's been great talking to you. If someone wanted to reach you and learn more about what you guys are up to at IntelliD, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah, you hit us up at um, in IntelliD.com. We have right on the front page, you know, a uh, demo or a uh, email form to shoot in. The uh, the actual info email goes straight, straight to where I can see it. And uh, and uh, demo requests and all that kind of stuff get handled by our team. And so uh, very visible to us. And that's that's a really great way to uh, uh, to grab my attention or, or talk to us in a broader way. That's great. Well, we've been speaking with Robert Stevenson today. He's the CEO at IntelliDy. IntelliDy offers the broadest platform available to seamlessly connect service industry workforces directly to their customers been talking about the last couple of years and the challenges in the hospitality space and looking forward. And it seems like the future is all about the data, Robert, <laughs> all about the data and what you could do with it. And clearly unifying all of those touch points with customers and staff is absolutely critical. Thanks so much for being on Cage, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you.